Good evening. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled meeting for the Board of Finance for Monday, November 19, 2018, to order. First item on the agenda is public forum. Anybody wishing to address the board in public forum? That being said, I'm going to take a moment just to uh, let everyone know that um, one of our members, Ken Gammerman, uh, is not going to be present tonight. Uh, he's having a medical procedure done um, tomorrow. And I spoke to him over the weekend, and he's, uh, as he has typically done when he's not able to attend, has rifled me all his notes. And so I'm ready to uh, present those and any comments and questions as appropriate during our meeting. Uh, item number two, approved minutes. Um, regular, uh, regular meeting minutes of October 15th, 2018. So moved. So you're a second. Second. Okay, any corrections, comments? I do. Go ahead, Veronica. Um, on page four, um, let's see, one, two, third paragraph down, Dr. Freeman explained that he had a rocky start with regard to transportation because, the, because of the bell changes. I don't think that's right. I think it was because of the school time change. It's page four. Page um, Yes, no, I'm sorry, page five, fourth paragraph down. Got it. Okay. Okay, yep, thank you. Yep. Um, <coughs> page four, I guess I, want, I was looking for clarification. Um, under item number four, uh, Mr. Sands went over expenses for the month, which totaled five million and change from the start of the fiscal year through September. They have spent eleven million and change in the comparable number in 2017. And then he stated that they incurred quite a few expenses at the start of the year, and some of this is year. It, mm. I don't know what that. Does anybody remember? The start of the year and some. Uh, I he then remember. goes on to say, but there has been some timing issues that result in less money being spent this month. So I think it's a reflection of the time of the year or the, uh, the, what the Start from so various many changes expenses associated. Start of the year, Start of the yeah. year yeah. Mm -hmm. but there have been some timing issues. So remove that set or that section that says, and some of this is year. Right. And then, uh, same page, a little further down, Mr. Beatty asked if there were any changes to special education. Just for clarification, I think you meant the special education line item or budget? That's correct. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I, I had one. Uh, yep. <clears throat> Present, just there's a vowel missing at the end of Mr. Trotta's name. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> Add one on there. And, and actually just below that under town officials, <clears throat> um, there's an extra A after Gloria Nemchuk. That's where it was. There it is. There you go. <laughs> Migrated. Got re relocated. I have one more. Go ahead, Veronica. Page seven, item seven. Um, Mr. Hoey said they had a draft land use audit report from Blum Shapiro. I, I think that that was not a, a land use audit report. It's a fraud risk assessment report. Is that correct? Uh, it's a combination. It's one of the same. We've been calling it a land use audit it's report, but you are correct. It's also the fraud, the fraud risk, risk assessment, assessment that they've requested in the audits over the years. Yeah. Uh, just very quickly, I wanted to just indicate that from page, make sure I get it, page four at the top, uh, just for clarification purposes, uh, <clears throat> there was a request uh, that we had of the Standing Building Committee regarding the, um, uh, let's see, the energy performance contracting projects and how they stand, and we received that update on October 30th. And we had also asked for, I think Mr. Gammerman was the one who asked about the RFP under Pension Committee. Mm -hmm. And that was received on October 27th. And I know that Linda responded to many questions that we had during Board of Ed. So I, I looked through here and everything that we had questions on were answered. 
Is there anything else? Call the okay. question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Uh, correspondence. Uh, item number one, standing building committee minutes. <clears throat> um, there, I don't believe we received the minutes. I did not receive them. I did not. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have them either. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do uh, for sake of agenda order, um, I did receive a draft of those, and there is uh, some things I want to share under new business under that. Uh, so rather than do it under correspondence directly to standing building, I want to do it uh, under new business. But um, if we had received the minutes, I would have addressed it now. Um, and as soon as I get those, I will forward them on. Pension committee minute, uh, minutes, item number two. Anything under pension committee? Long I, meeting. I'm just curious, yeah. do you always go into executive session when you do the interview the consultants? We've done it but once, Mr. Trotter, so I think that's probably the way to do it. Okay, just some... Yeah. some but you're invited to tomorrow's meeting if you'd like to. Some confidential information comes out a little earlier. Right. We talking discuss, about stuff. discuss aspects of the portfolio and then discuss their strategies. And, uh, okay. And because everything that we do is minutes, and all the fund managers for miles and miles around read our minutes, so we can contact this asking us if we'd like other, if we'd like their counsel. Uh, they don't. We just keep it to ourselves. I was curious. There was. I think there was a notation that one particular group got invited back to do more presentations? There were two. 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 <clears throat> and uh, we'll see them at 8.30 tomorrow morning and we'll have a, we'll have a winner by the afternoon. Great. Okay. That is usually protocol when you're talking about contracts and interviews. That's pretty much yeah. standard. And pricing. Yeah. And pricing. yeah. yeah. Okay. The, uh, just go uh, ahead, Jeff. Uh, obviously we can't it's the pension committee uh, commission that uh, adopts their minutes, but you just might want to check some of the dates for hiring and resignation in there. That looks there's one for one of the employees. Their date of resignation was August 24th, 2018, and the date of commencement was September 1st of 2018. So, you may just want to update that. So. I'll pass it on. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be thorough and they'll pick that up, right? I have no idea. I, I'm sure they will, but... <laughs> okay. Anything else on pension committee? Okay. Item number four, review and accept report of expenditures for the Board of Education for October 2018. Linda and Vince. Good evening. Okay. Floor is yours. So I was the reviewer for October, okay. and uh, I reviewed the expenditures last Monday during our operations committee meeting, and then later made a motion to approve the expenditures during the Board of Ed meeting for $4,307,976.40. And obviously, as you all know, the most noteworthy item is our special education which is now in excess of $500,000. And um, I think you have a report there that Linda just distributed. So that's of concern, obviously. Uh, but I want to mention, we also received a revenue from an out-of-district student from Old Saybrook uh, for the <coughs> participation in the Crossroads program and the tuition is somewhere between, what is it, 45 and $47,000? Yeah, yeah, 48000 I believe. So Paul and uh, Jason Scanziano have been reaching out to districts to let them know that we do have room in our Crossroads program and potentially receive some additional out-of-district students where there would be a, a revenue. So that was one item. Another item that we discussed, I, I like to do a comparison with Eversource to see how we're doing in terms of uh, efficiencies. And for the month of October, uh, as compared to last year, we were $39,000 less in um, expense 
with Eversource, and I checked with, with Cliff, I wasn't sure, were those a result of usage or efficiencies, and he believes it is as a result of efficiencies because of a lot of the work that they're doing and the installation of the HVAC systems in Baldwin and uh, Melissa Jones. So he attributes some of those efficiencies to things like that. Good. And another item that uh, I highlighted was the Baldwin furniture, tables and chairs. It was a replacement cost of $12,208.30. And that was applied to the prior year's encumbrances, which appears in the reconciliation statement. So that 12208 is included in the $75,534.09. And the via spending. Uh, so we paid for it in at the end of July, right? Was it? Or the end no, of no, we June? paid for it in in October. In October, but, but we, it was applied. purchased back in the previous yeah, in the previous year. Previous year, right? So that's why it's an encumbrance. Yeah. And then the one other item was the uh, Cox carpet replacement, forty-four thousand six hundred and sixty-one dollars and fifty-six cents. So we had anticipated that that would be a cost in, in this year's budget. It was a, part of the approved budget process. Part of capital. Yeah. Um, and the company was Red Thread, and I believe yes. they're having some problems with the installation. And not, on, not on what was just installed. There was an issue with carpeting that was installed a number of years ago. Um, that they are working on correcting right now. It probably won't be fixed until the summer because it means taking out all the bookcases and books that are in the media center. Um, the carpet itself is failing. So if you're in there and you see red uh, tape X's on the floor, it's not to help line up children or anything. It's to keep the carpet down. Um, and they're working with the manufacturer and it should be repaired at no car cost to us. And I believe Cliff said it was put in back in 2014? 14, yeah. Um, so this carpet is failing and they have to replace it. Within the warranty period. Yeah. And they, they agreed to, <clears throat> to help with the removal of all the yes, file so cab, all the cabinets, the yeah, bookcases. And, and, and where is this? At Cox. Cox, Cox yes. yeah. Was it the same company that installed it that's now doing the replacement? Or do we know? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm I don't sure. know for sure. Okay. And then the one other item that we've been discussing the last several months is Our Lady of Mercy. Uh, where we're responsible for special ed and nursing, as well as uh, bus transportation for Guilford residents. And uh, we're pretty much able to, we, we can cover the special ed and nursing costs, but the busing is $45,000. Oh, no, it's going to be more than that. It's going to be I more did get confirmation that. from the bus company that it is not the smaller van, oh. it is a bigger bus, which is more expensive. So it's now closer to like sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars for the year for the bus that has to get paid. So, <clears throat> any special, sorry, any special education uh, needs or was it nurse? Nurses, nurse, nurse, yeah, is going to be accommodated in the current budget. Yes, yes. with our staff. Right. With so it Existing. won't require any additional costs there. Okay. Just time away from for our people from the district to be there. So our we people will go to Our Lady of Mercy? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. our nurses setting up files, making sure things were, were done that you know, needed to be in place. Um, special ed, there's a few where times where some of our staff will be required to attend a PPT meeting there. But there will not be, should not be a lot of time out of district for some of those, some of those things. And what grades are, they, are we serving in Guilford? So we are fourth through eighth. Fourth through okay. Eight, yeah. Good. So it could be some students from an elementary school and some from a middle school. Yes. With her mm -hmm. special special mm -hmm. education yes. needs. Yes. Okay. Actually, that was one of the one, one of the questions. I'm, I'm glad you you you've basically been covering everything. In the last few <laughs> questions that I, I was going to have uh, some of them from Mr. Gammerman. Uh, that sixty seventy thousand now. I know it was in the minutes. I think at one point it was fifty. Uh, right, because I 50. thought it was just a van that was picking right. up Right, so a it's few gone students. up because of so the size of the van. Yes. Is, is, is there any reason to believe that those costs are going to escalate beyond that? Or we yeah. think we're, we're locked in now for the school year? Okay. Unless they have a sudden influx of, of Guilford students attending there, mm -hmm. no. Okay. So that's 65, you're saying? Mm, it's, about, it's about 65. 65. Okay.
questions. Does that bus, it's just an addition to the buses we have in circulation already. It's not taking away from any of the existing roads that we no. have, right? No. Okay. Right. Mr. Chair? Just yes, sir. One uh, clarification. Any students that need out of district, are we responsible for those? Any out of district special education costs? For the bus transportation? To the, Our Lady of Mercy? No. Only to, you're, you're, you're asking is it any, only any is it Guilford students or any other school? Identified as special needs <clears throat> who need out of district. Right, yes. Are we responsible for those? Yes. yes. Even, even those that, okay, gotcha. Because they would be Guilford students anyway, right? Right. right. Yeah. So it's only the Guilford students only, that were responsible for. Yeah, we're only for. responsible for Guilford. So it's right. not. So there's no out of district, because everyone's in district if we're if we're taking care of them from Guilford. Yeah, I saw where you're going with that, I, but okay. Actually, that raises a question for me: for the Old Saybrook student. As far as bus transportation, uh, the one that's coming from Old Saybrook, oh, Saybrook you know, would we know? We, we don't. don't. Okay. Right. Oh, Old Saybrook has to be. Old Saybrook. Okay. Uh, let's just stay on that real quick. Did, did I? I saw it. Now it's. It's okay. The, the, the number that's in here was different from the number last month. Is that because there was another payment, or it got adjusted and it's a? The tuition. Report? I think it went up like eight eight thousand right. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Is. So the tuition report went up because on last month's report, I had n made a note that there were three students that I didn't have costs for. Right. So this now includes costs for two of them and a partial cost for the third because I still don't know the full cost for the third student. So this could go up more when I get those final costs. Okay. Um, on, on the one particular student that's out of district, what I'm, what I'm asking is, is that, a, was that, is that number, did that go up? Or what they're reimbursing us for from last? Because it did the number to change from last month, their, uh, that report. Oh, that, that one high cost one that was capped? Yeah. No, that part did not change. Okay. Something else changed. Okay. So, okay, so now we'll go back to the tuition. <clears throat> um, one of the things I noticed uh, is that in the expense summary and I think it was even noted I I noticed it said tuition the amount expended is lower than the prior year um, and then I looked and yeah sure enough it is lower um, however we know where everything is trending mm -hmm. um, and so I was going to ask on those students that you weren't sure about they are now included in here in this new report except for the one that's only a partial exactly mm -hmm. right And you know, I'm estimated the excess cost. Um, I actually went down on the percentage that I think we're going to get from the state. Mm -hmm. If that comes in higher, then and we get a little bit more money, then that deficit won't be quite as bad. But mm -hmm. because I don't know yet and won't know until the end of February, I'm just trying to be very cautious. Right. And again, yeah, no, I. I feel it's important to note, whether it's between us or for the camera, that the budget numbers that were developed last year just had, there was absolutely no way of predicting what came forward this year. Um, a question that came up that I actually had as well when I had a discussion with Mr. Gammerman is, um, how does this affect the budgeting for next year in terms of how we're going to look at it? Um, is there, I know it's a little bit premature, but there was concern so regarding this kind of a fluctuation. We're doing the same thing that we usually do. We look at the only thing, the thing that we know definite is what we have outplaced at that moment in time. Right. So we're looking at those students, see if anybody's aging out. We do look to see if there's anybody on the horizon, but it is only November. So, you know, things change throughout the year. Um, last year we did have a bit of a buffer. Maybe we need to go a bigger buffer. I, you know, it, we're, we do have a budget developed at this point. Um, that additional outplace number is still kind of up in the air as to where that's going to actually land. But we obviously have to do something because we can't just budget for the kids that we know because it changes so much. 
and not, I'm not trying to hold you to any kind of a process or number, but it's always good to have that restated, I think, once in a while, is that the control of this is very minimal, of, of how that number fluctuates. And the Board of Ed's can appropriate as, as they need to. They always have, so. But it's gonna be challenging as it, as it has been in the past. On a workshop meeting in uh, last month, typically we have a meeting with the leadership team uh, about the upcoming budget season and uh, the leadership team is aware of this issue. So in terms of, you know, cost containments and all of that was you know, highlighted in, in view of, of the situation. I think it's also important to note in addition, I mean, the number of students obviously is a, is one variable that you have to work with, but the other variable is that the needs and the treatment and the therapies that one student may need can vary from September yeah. Yeah. to February. Mm -hmm. And so there's several variables that, oh, yeah. you know, a change, a, in, a change in the the needs for the student could have a significant impact, even if the numbers stay the same year after year. <clears throat> so we actually did have one little piece of good news. Um, there was one student who was receiving special ed services at a, um, a final BOAG magnet school who no longer were receiving special ed services. So that saved us about $16,000. So I'll take any little bit of savings I can get. That was some good news that Jason Sconziano, the new director, was able to bring back to us. And hopefully we might receive a few other out-of-district students like the one from Old Saybrook. Well, the call's out there, so. Yeah. Is, it, is there a limit to the distance for an out-of-district student? I mean, I couldn't imagine someone coming from Pomfret or something like that here, or, or is there? As long as they can get them here. As long as they can get them here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no limit. There's no By limit. law, you can't. No, no. I mean, we have outplaced students. We've had them across the country. And obviously it's on a day student, it's a residential placement, but it's, you know, if we can, if the student can get here and we have an opening, They're welcome. it could be They're done. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> just looking at the summary, uh, just on the upkeep of buildings and grounds, uh, I, obviously the encumbrances stay high there, um, which is bringing that percent of spending up to you. Uh, 86 percent, I guess. Currently. Yes. Um, but most of that's in encumbrances. So. And we have actually told um, Mr. Graham that he needs to stop any projects that aren't mm -hmm. necessary. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, his is the first area we look to freeze when we know we're facing a deficit of something. So. Right. One, one item that seemed low, and this may just be timing, was the percent of teachers' salaries as well. Is that just a function of, I mean, we're nearly a third of the year, way through the school year, but we're only at less than 20 percent of the Right, because the majority of the teachers get paid over 26 pay periods, so they would technically get paid over the summer. So in June, we really, instead of giving them just two paychecks, we give them six. I see. So it's It'll always caught up at, that at, at the end where they get their, their lump sum payment that would cover them through their summer. All right. When you look at where we were last year at this time, it's virtually the same. same. Yeah. Anything else on the uh, summer? That did not make sense. No. Before we jump to any questions sure. on the board, um, yeah. we just I'm not sure you guys are all aware of it. We have our first joint meeting prior to your December meeting. Oh, good. You're just taking care of that now. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we just figured, you know, put it out there that we will be having our first yeah. budget discussion um, prior to your meeting. Yes. So everyone here is already booked for it's, it's, December. Yes. There, there are two meetings that we're booked. As of, as of today, I think I saw an email from uh, Terry. Yes. Right? That indicated the rooms were booked uh, were usually next door. For and the, and the December one is usually at 6:30. Uh, 
Um, well, it's been downstairs. It's actually, it's been it's rotated. So just okay. Like, yeah. I would I would look at the yeah, email to make sure you get the location correctly. Okay. But it'll be somewhere in this building. Um, the December one is usually at six thirty, and then January we usually try to have it at yes, six. Six gives us a little more time to go through. Time. Right. But yes, thank you for that, and I'll bring that up uh, again later. Okay. Thank you. Um, Warrants. The first item was the uh, A&W sanitation for this wheat septic pump out. Any feedback on how the new system is operating? Uh, I haven't heard anything, so I'm saying no news is good news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm racing through them to see if I have anything. Uh, as the rest of us continue to look at warrants, there was a question on the October 9th meeting minutes. And it's under uh, item 9.4, which is submission of the consolidated grants application. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there was a total grant application of about $234,000 and it was allocated into three different buckets, so to speak. Um, the question regarding, was that a limited or max amount that we could apply for, or could we have applied for more, or how was that number, how, how was that number generated? That was what Just we, what, what we well, needed and what that no, we applied that's what, for? No, that's what we were told our allotment was. Oh, oh okay. So, we so the grant number was already set, and we right, were told to, this is how you can use it. Yes, so we could write up how we wanted to use it and how we we're going to allocate it. Okay. Um, it is a lot less than what we received last year. Okay. So we did a lot less. Yeah, yeah I couldn't less. gather from from the notes, but I was curious about that. It was so less, less than it was yeah. less than okay. the previous year's allotment. Okay. Anything else in any of the minutes? Food service. Yes. Uh, we're now. This is back in you know early October. We were running a deficit of about fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question would be: Have we evened off now, or are we catching up? We are. There were, there were some parameters of why we were running at a deficit, okay. and so I'm assuming that there must have been some catching up. So we're catching up. October um, was a. Profit of twelve thousand eight hundred dollars, so it brings our deficit down to thirty six thousand. Mm -hmm. So she's chipping away at it, hoping that months okay. ahead we'll, we'll erase that deficit and turn right. turn around again. Okay. Did I also notice the minutes that the criteria has gotten a little more liberal now too for the uh, free uh, meal program? Uh, the classification was changed. Yeah, they, they changed. Um, so I think the, the the income guidelines are the same, same, but they've now added if you're Medicaid eligible, you are eligible for free reduced lunch. It's changed. So it's a direct certification list that comes from the state that tells us who's there. You know, it's not the income driven. Like, okay. So maybe a few more people are qualified now. Yeah, it, it, it was more students. So we went from like nine percent to twelve percent of our of our population being free and reduced. So it did it was a few percentages. And it just has to be the child that's qualified for Medicaid. It doesn't have to be the parent. <coughs> Definitely think we concentrate better in school or full time. Absolutely. <coughs> Anything else on the minutes? Which is really all we have left to talk about. Um, I had something on, actually, I just want to bring it to everyone's attention. Um, on October 24th, there were minutes here, for, uh, operations committee that held their first public input session. Um, I'm sure we all read those. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I was able to make that meeting and can confirm that uh, out of the dozen people that spoke, you probably saw that 10 of them were about art in the elementary schools. Uh, there was one regarding a crossing guard at Adams, uh, and there was one comment regarding uh, some additional assistance with the saloon team for uh, an assistant coach and 
in transportation. So art is going to be the subject of the uh, of the year, I guess, for elementary schools. And I, I think if we all uh, you know got through the minutes and read them in detail, uh, you would see that there's a real challenge to that because there was already music time added. And so now it's okay, where do you go to put in more art time and not take out of the classroom? So uh, it'll be a challenge, but I'm sure we're up to it as we always have been. So, uh, but it was it was a good good attendance. I thought at it for a first public input session. It was probably about 30, 35 people there. So I'm sure, including some admin. I think probably a couple of principals were there. Yeah. Yes, I kind of yeah, believe. I believe. believe. I think the four elementary principals were there. I'm sure. I mean, there's, yeah. there's usually a few sure of them to yeah. attend. Yeah. But, it, but it was good. It was good to be mm -hmm. uh, I have a question about the, the art. You know, I know a lot of uh, residents have been asking if kids can, can get involved with more art time. Um, is the, will this affect the budget where we'll need the art teachers to, to have more hours, or is this just a matter of trying to balance the core subjects with the art time? It's trying to kind of gather. Well, that so it's both. It's, it's trying to fit the more time into the schedule, but it's also to require additional teachers because we have teachers that cover two schools. So you'd have to have, to have additional staff to cover one of every elementary school in order to give more time within the school day. Okay, so if they, so it's both if they come up to those kind of state averages, I think it's 120 minutes of art, then you need to have a teacher at each school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I think we read it and I heard it that night that I believe. At the elementary school level, there's you know, 30 minutes of art once a week. Is that correct? It's something like that, and I and I thought, wow, that, that is. That, I, I could see why that would come up, especially someone who has some artistic background back in the day. So I could see why that's so important. And uh, back in the day, not now. But. Yes. By the time you by the time you get everything set up, you're breaking. And then the other discussion that we had was around incorporating art into the main yeah, yeah, sure. math and science, and, yeah, which they, they already do. It's a, yeah, it's a uh, pedagogy, I guess, you know, with STEM. Now you hear about STEM classroom. Yeah. And now it's STEAM. And now everyone's talking about STEAM, and A being the art. So um, kind of being in that field a little bit. Trying to fit that in facility wise is very difficult. Uh, okay. Anything else on minutes? No, I or the summer? Or the summer? Yep. Um, I was an invoice for reading. No, it was like the E rate online. LLC. If you have services. What is that service? Um, service. Um, the E rate or the Universal Service Fund, it's. Um, Money that we get back for our actually for our Comcast bill, we used to get a fifth telephone bill. On your home phone bill, you'll see it as universal service fund charge. Um, so we get money back from that fund for the services, the Comcast services that we purchase. So if you look, the Comcast bills fluctuate. Um, and that's because of the, when they apply those credits. So we pay a consultant to help do all the paperwork, get all the money that we're supposed to do, get make sure the filing is complete because it's, it's a large undertaking to file. Three thousand dollars a year. Right. The first half was fifteen hundred. Yes. So. Yeah. And then the second question I had was the Frontline Technologies Group applicant tracking software. That's an interesting one. So the applicant tracking stuff, that's the online um, application program that we use where people can apply for jobs online, so okay. either in district or, or out of district, current employees or, or wannabe employees. Um, Vince's comment was in reference to this company having some very large increases on, they have three different products that we use, and they've had some very large um, increases this year. That kind of making us all wonder who else is out there we, that we can look at to use because that one, even though it's a small dollar amount, was a 24% increase this year. Of course, after the budget was set, it's only $800, but it's a 24% increase over what we paid last year. So, so you left after um, six. Straight A's all the way through high school. 
Product so right. they take yeah. advantage of, and it's just probably not it's, out there. It's helpful yeah. from your perspective yeah. to have that service provided, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anything else? The lender events. Okay. Uh, with that, I will entertain a motion to accept the report of expenditures of the Board of Education. The month of October 2018, an email of $4,307,976.40. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, recusals? Thank you. Item number five review and approve report of expenditures for town government for October 2018. We have a guest. Guest presenter. Guest presenter tonight, Sandy O'Freddy. Good evening. It is good to see you every once in a while. You get out of the office. Yeah. <laughs> Come to my favorite place. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be anywhere else but here tonight. So. But, but thank you for filling in for me, Jane. Very much appreciated. Otherwise, our first selectman was going to have to get grilled tonight. So. Yeah, you can She'll give you better answers. <laughs> Okay. Well, All yours, start Cindy. with our expenses. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we're at, we're at um, a third of the way through our fiscal year, and our expenses are tracking slightly lower than we were at the same time last year. And we're currently at 35.5%. And I mean, it's very slightly different. I mean, only four tenths of a percent. So, um, line items such as insurance are trending higher due to the timing of payments in the first quarter. Um, public Works, Youth and Family Services, and Parks and Rec are both, are all three of those are up over 40. And I looked at the detail back up. Looks like Public Works is mostly encumbrances. Yeah. So most of that is in encumbrances. That would be in equipment repair road maintenance summer and winter there were quite a few encumbrances i had a question regarding the summer and winter road maintenance with the encumbrances so now let's see if i remember what i was thinking when i went through this last night so winter we have a lot encumbered which would make sense as we prepare it's we it's still it's have all. about twenty thousand encumbered for summer is that encumbered <coughs> for preparation going into the end of next fiscal year Right, so there's a so we haven't spent it all, and it's encumbered, but it's to be, be prepared for the second half of our fiscal year, which will go into the summer. Right. Okay. And the winter, to me, made sense because we're we're just prepping for for a, a mild good, winter for a, for a, for a, very for mild, a good yes. winter. <laughs> However, we want to define that. We're not going to give anybody any any uh, uh, food food yeah, on we're them. Off to a great start. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we handled it. Um, okay, so that was where that was, and then trying to find the youth and family services. Looked like the same thing for youth and family services, yeah, encumbered yeah. under contracted services. Mm -hmm. And um, same thing for parks, parks and rec. Building maintenance, ground maintenance, and field maintenance were all encumbered, so... So nothing abnormal. Yep. I mean, we're just we're we're prepping, and we've got the contracts in place, and so that th those trended those looked like they trended higher, but everything else seemed pretty standard. Anything else on expenses? I'm just curious. So the town is at forty nine point eight percent expended at about a third of the way through the year. Is it is it really just the retirement of principal that kind of makes it seem so much higher? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's because we re retired all our principal for the year already. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Anything else on expenses? Okay. Should we go to revenue? Sure. <clears throat> all right. We had our highest month of in 
investment interest in October, and we will start to see a decline in November as cash flow requires us to w make withdrawals from the step account. Mm -hmm. Tax revenue is lower than last year. A couple of things account for this. Last year at this time, we had collected over 516,000 in delinquent taxes and associated interest. Um, this year, the total of those two line items is only 243,000. And in addition, the tax collector reported that the motor vehicle delinquencies are on a rise, accounting for a portion of the lower current year tax revenue. <coughs> okay, so that answers some of the question of why so much lower I had here. Um, is there, are we caught up? Because I know that there, Mary Jane had mentioned there was yeah. some <coughs> issues with staffing and being able to enter all, we, we had received all of it, but it just hadn't been entered into the, uh, to, into to the, the system. system. Are we um, caught up now? We should be all caught up. I know um, Darlene had checked with the tax office to make sure that we had all their deposits and everything was entered. and. So it should all be up current. So the 54.8% tax collection last year is somewhat, based on what you just said, a bit of an anomaly? Yes. Okay. The 47.7 is more standard? Yes. More normal? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, the build, building department revenue is up from last year. We have a couple large projects accounting for this increase. And uh, we just wanted to note that social services has the $1 revenue, which is for a notary fee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't a mistake. Um, yes. To the uh, billing uh, revenues, yes. you will see a corresponding um, uh, increase in costs uh, on the expense side for billing uh, mm -hmm. because we have hired our former uh, building official to do work uh, specifically related to those projects that are generating the additional revenue. Uh, in the upcoming budget season, uh, we are going to be looking at uh, formalizing that process uh, because we we have ex we have uh, expenses associated with that that are not personnel that they are currently listed as uh, consulting services. Mm -hmm. So we will be evaluating whether we move that to uh, full uh, into personnel. In an effort of more cost efficiency? No, just to keep it cleaner. Just keep it cleaner, okay. That works too. Do you see that we're gonna need to continue to do that going forward using the same person or? Uh, we're, we're, that's part of the evaluation. The continuation of projects like 66 High Street, uh, there was a couple of, there was a project with one of the uh, uh, rest homes, the uh, facility, uh, and there are, uh, there are, there's a 350 Goose Lane, there's another, uh, uh, there's another project coming there, so uh, there's a good possibility that this could be a couple of year cycle that we need to take <coughs> Anybody on staff that we can start training to take those responsibilities? The answer is no, uh, but if we train somebody on that staff, then we're going to have to replace that other individual with the job function they're currently doing. Uh, one of the, did you have anything else on the revenues? No. I do. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the first installment of the ECS payments have been received. It represented 25% of the Guilford actual ECS allocation of the $2,156,390. Our lower budget takes into account estimated reductions. A recent email from the State Department of Education noted that prior year adjustments should be available by the next payment in February and may cause significant variance for published rates. This means that our next installment should include the reductions. So. So we all, we all received that memo. Actually, the memo came to me through Mary Jane, I think, and then I sent it out to the board on the 10th of November, so I think we all saw that. Hopefully, hopefully we all got that. Mm -hmm. um, other state revenues are beginning to come in, and we've received 67% of our budget so far. Overall revenues are lower than last year, but are still on track to meet exceed or exceed our published budget. 
Anything else on revenues? Uh, warrants? Do warrants or do you want to do them medical at the end? Yeah, we'll do okay. medical at the end. Anything on warrants? Your special fund? I don't see anything on my end. Warrants. Hmm. On the weekly warrants. Um, I guess my question is there's a legal expense uh, regarding DEEP, and I'm wondering where those, where that might stand in terms of disguise, as far as things moving on that. Uh, legal we, expenses on DEEP? On DEEP? On the DEEP uh, under invoice description. Um, we have, I believe it's on December 10th. No, excuse me. It is on the... Um, it is December 10th, I believe. We have a meeting with DEEP, uh, our uh, outside council, environmental council, uh, where we are going to be responding to the consent order that was issued to us that we shared with you folks uh, yes. several weeks ago. So there is an, uh, I was wondering if there was an upcoming meeting. And there is. Moving, so it's moving forward. There is. So that's, the expenses are just as they're needed. Continued, continued legal expense related to that. Right. Okay. Any updates on uh, Simon the dog? Uh, yes, uh, we had the uh, Simon the Dog folks at the Board of Selectmen meeting this morning, um, uh, petitioning us Did once they again. Come up every week? Uh, they haven't been here in a while, um, and uh, most recently, um, they well, um, they were uh, bemoaning the fact this morning that uh, they showed up for the last hearing at the Department of Agriculture. Uh, which wound up being canceled, largely because the, uh, uh, the dog owner uh, violated the confidentiality gag rule that was placed on that most recent meeting, scheduled meeting. Uh, and that's the reason that the Department of Agriculture canceled that meeting. It was supposed to have been a mediation session, uh, but because uh, they decided to publicize it and uh, claim that it violated their First Amendment rights, in fact, they sued in federal court um, uh, and they sued uh, two individuals specifically at the Department of Agriculture over the scheduling of that particular hearing. The Department of Agriculture uh, backed off because there was an injunction that was granted. Uh, the Department of Agriculture backed off. We are now awaiting the rescheduling of the um, uh, continuation of the hearing that took place in August um, relative to the final determination of uh, Simon. And those, for those of you who have followed it in social media, there are folks who are contending who continue to point out how much we spent legal, uh, legal bills on this. Uh, we are staying the course. Um, I stand by the original statement, which is the advice of counsel, that the, neither I nor the Board of Selectmen has the statutory authority to intervene in this case, uh, that the appropriate authorities are, in fact, working through the process. Is Simon a guest of the town? Yeah, Simon, is a, Simon is a guest of the town at the pound. Uh, we'll remain there until final adjudication of this case. Does the town pick up the, those expenses or is the, the town owner is picking of the up? The town is picking up that expense. And I was just going to ask at this point, do we have a, do we, do we know what the total legal expense has been? Uh, I couldn't give you a, an you, absolute number. Okay. Do you have recourse to recover? Uh, no, that's unfortunate. We do not have recourse. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think this board should know what it's costing. Oh, uh, do yourself a favor and pop up Save Simon uh, on Facebook, and you'll find a number at least that's a couple of maybe a month old. But we'll get you those. We'll get you the, the firm numbers at okay. this point. Thank you. I think last month that was thirty-five. Just add. Yeah. 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 What's in this month? I think what's important here is that uh, the <coughs> animal control officer and our chief of police have made a decision relative to the determination of this dog based on the case, based on the evidence that was presented to them. Uh, and uh, it is my assumption and the Board of Selectmen's uh, feelings 
that we are going to continue to support the decision made by the animal control officer and our chief of police. And there are there are, you, you there are pieces of information that are not that is not in the public domain that would impact people's thinking on this issue. And, and the town is following the process that's been laid out. We are following the, st the statutory process, uh, as is the uh, family, uh, the family dog owner, the dog's family, with the exception of the fact that they violated the gag rule on the uh, most recent mediation session. Any updates on the uh, athletic field? Yes. Um, we, uh, we have a scheduled date, uh, I think that's December 12th, for mediation. Um, there's uh, the multiple parties agreed on a mediator, uh, Lou Pepe uh, is a name that might be familiar to, to those of you in the legal profession. Um, we have a draft submission of our mediation statement. Um, we actually had a conference call earlier today, uh, standing building committee, uh, myself, Pam Millman, uh, and our outside attorney, Jeff D'Onofrio as well as Castle Blues Associates uh, to lay out our strategy in terms of uh, presenting our case. Um, we feel relatively comfortable that uh, the mediation will, will identify, well, will result in a decision uh, that keeps us whole. What I will tell you is uh, mediation, and Jeff, you may be more familiar with this than I am, uh, mediation unfortunately does not allow us to recover legal costs or consulting costs. Um, however, uh, very often in mediation, uh, part of mediation is every party gets a piece of the responsibility or a piece of the remedy. Uh, in this case, uh, we are contending that the only piece that we would own would be those that are not covered under traditional mediation uh, 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 coverage. So our legal expense and our uh, consulting expenses would be the only thing we would contribute to having this field fixed. So do I sound like a jailhouse lawyer or what? You're getting an education, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it's, and, and, and I didn't realize that. Yeah. And I think that there, there have been some questions of me, and I don't know about the rest of the board, and maybe you know, anybody who's an elected official who knows anything about this is, are, are we going to come whole with, you know, our legal expenses going to be paid, consultant expenses? And, and based on what you've learned, that is... It, it, that, it, it probably right. shouldn't surprise you that the position we're taking is the town of Guilford contracted with two individuals. One, uh, the design firm, and second, right. the uh, contractor, to build a turf field that we could use. Uh, we expended over, uh, roughly a million dollars to do so, and we do not have a field that we can use. It is our expectation that we have a field that we can use without expending another dollar to do so. But to get to that you can point. be you can be fairly certain something along those lines will be in our position statement and our argument in front of the mediator. Oh, I'm sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Warrants? We'll go to. We'll, otherwise, we'll go to medical. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> after review of the July and August claims, we determined that the July claims were overstated. July claims were held and paid in August. The correction has been made and the claims for the first quarter are now back to where we expected them to be at this time. Although they seem low compared to a monthly budget, kept in, keep in mind that town employees are now on the HSA plan. Claims will fluctuate as employees begin to meet their deductibles. Um, other revenue is lower than budgeted, but that is consistent with prior years since there is fluctuation month to month. Then um, our overall projected fund balance at the end of the year is 4.4 million. I think I went a little bit faster than. So, I want to go back to the previous month. So, what, what we're seeing now has been adjusted and corrected. Yes, and these so are the correct numbers. The claims we saw in July last month, which were a million, and then August was 1.5 million. We're still at 1.5 million in August, but that's because a lot of July moved over to August? Yes. 
but the, okay. it wasn't adjusted in last month's statement. And no, it, it wasn't. On, and, it was, then, and it is on this one. Yes. Right. Well, I mean, that, and that's, that's great. That's great news that it was adjusted. Um, I just wanted to confirm that what we saw in July, the last couple of months, is not what the number was. Because it's showing claims of a million dollars. And now it's... 94,000. Now it's 94,000. And August is higher. So it, it's an offset. The claim's an offset. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's great news. Yeah. It's yeah. great news. I just okay. Yeah. Because Anthem changed their um, software, so okay. it, it, they were a little behind in getting the claims out. So now they they just showed up in August, and everything's okay. been adjusted. All right. Um, that being said, October was also a decent month. Mm. So, I mean, that's good for everybody. Um, I looked at the ISL stop loss. I was, a little, I, you know, when I saw the numbers initially, total claims and the amount covered, I looked back at last year at this time, and it's not too far off, actually. So we're, you know, we're, we're, cut, we're the premium is at 1.3, and we're about, Looking at this, maybe I don't know, fifteen percent of the way there. Yep. Maybe twenty. Yeah, probably more than fifteen percent of the way there. But that's similar to where we were last year. I didn't know if we were trending higher or not, but we're we're pretty neutral on that. Mr. Chairman, yes. That, that, that section needs to be adjusted. If you take a look, the amount covered by ASL shows right. two forty-nine. Yeah. But then the summary section it still shows two twenty-nine. So right. It needs to be adjusted. Uh, secondly, I would ask if the board would prefer to see some accommodation on this spreadsheet for the decision this board made, uh, I believe last month, to appropriate some funds from uh, this account for the purposes of establishing um, a, a trust fund for the OPEP. So would you prefer to see that reflected in this document because those funds have not yet been uh, transferred? I think it, it I think we should we should have it here. Okay. Yeah. And we'll make sure yeah. that it happens. Yeah, keep it together. Just if you could when you make that change if you could just put an annotation on oh, the absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Know, there'll be a, there'll be an item change. there that says uh, you know less the, uh, right. the transfer approved by right. the board of finance. Okay. Anything else in medical? Anything else for Sandy? Okay. Not, okay. Okay. We'll let you off easy tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, do I uh, hear a motion to approve the report of expenditures of the town for the month of uh, October 2018, the amount of two million twenty thousand two hundred eighty-nine dollars? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Recusals? Okay. Item number six, consider and take possible action on Board of Finance meeting calendar for 2019. Um, before we go into this, I just wanted to also indicate that Linda provided us with her message responding to questions last time. You provide us with the Board of Ed budget calendar as well. And um, as we all know, the budget process for the Board of Ed has been starting yeah, pretty much since the end of September when the forms went out. So um, what's not on here is also the Board of Finance, Board of Education uh, joint, joint meetings. meetings, which we talked about in December or January already. Um, I checked with Ken, uh, and these dates are all okay with Mr. Gammerman. I did note, actually he brought it to my attention, that under the following tentative dates the Tuesday March 4th 2019 date should be the 5th probably just a remnant from last year correcting the dates right so yeah Tuesday is the 5th Thursday is the 7th and Monday is March the 11th and those are our key public hearing and two workshop dates for the budget that was it though Mr. Chairman, do we know the yes. uh, town workshop dates? I don't think we usually carry them on this document. Uh, no, they have not yet been established. They're, they're usually, they'll be in the, probably the second week of uh, January. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, what also is not on here is the capital uh, budget presentation, which is the 29th of November. I believe you've all been invited to that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. There's a few dates. These are these are the yeah, these are the meeting the dates. Key meeting dates. The ones we're invited to. You're invited to all of ours. I know. These these are these are our meetings. Correct. These are the ones we want. They're, they're excellent <laughs> meetings, actually. Really, really excellent workshops. Do we have to... Uh, <coughs> for the case? annual budget meeting. Uh, yes, we do. So I was going to entertain a motion to approve so the... Moved. Okay. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, let's see. Item number seven, old business. I was actually going to raise the turf field. I think we've done that. And uh, Matt, we had broached the subject a little while ago. Veronica did actually of the land use audit report. Uh, last meeting, it was going to the departments for comment. Right. And um, where does that stand at this um, particular moment? We've recently synthesized those, uh, those, that input. Um, I also extended it out to, I recently extended it out to the uh, uh, police and fire chief because they're impacted by some of the, uh, some of the considerations there. Um, so the, the final uh, presentation will be to the board of uh, selectmen on December 3rd for acceptance of the document. Great. We're almost there. We're there. We're getting there. Okay, anything else under old business? I just realized I'm not quite sure why that came before committee reports, but um, <laughs> that's okay. I approve the thing, so I don't know. Uh, and number eight, uh, committee reports, building permit, anything on building permit? Uh, only that we're continuing to work. We just received some additional information from the fire department, which we hope to incorporate into what we're working on, so. Okay, great, thank you. So, uh, item number one, under committee reports, um, discuss and take possible action on elected official salary for the registrar voters. Um, so, we tabled this last meeting, and uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Goldblatt for providing the information that he did. Uh, it was very helpful to look at. Um, I will start the conversation by saying, in looking at the comparable towns, um, <laughs> they're not really comparable. <laughs> I mean, when you look at the populations and you look at the mill rates and you look at the government types, it, they're all over the place. Um, but I, I do think it was a, a really good exercise in looking at what other towns are doing. Um, so I do appreciate that. Uh, what I th thought interesting, and of course, you know, you have high numbers and low numbers, but when you take all the averages of what he put together, where, you know, the average is 21,546, and um, actually the number here is higher, I believe, than what the actual, no, no actually it's, yeah, it's higher, but it's not 21,741, it's I think 22, just over 22, which was in his email to us, so. Um, and I did confirm that based on when you look at the numbers, it is 22067. Um, so looking at that information, and then he sent us as well what's been going on uh, regarding the town employees and the collective bargaining units. And those increases, of course, also range all over the place. But looking at the last couple of years alone, um, the increases have been anywhere between two and a half to, we'll say three, but for the most part it's around 265. That's been kind of the, uh, the average increase in terms of percentage across all the bargaining units. Um, so the information is really kind of all over the place. Um, I want to remind everyone that when the registrar of voters were both here, um, Louise and Gloria, Louisa made a comment that she thought the salaries were fair, but she would like them to continue to be fair. Um, so with that, I 
I'm entertaining any continued discussion or conversation regarding a, uh, the possibility of a salary adjustment or the salary uh, overall for the uh, registrar voters. Mr. Chairman, did we receive any kind of estimate for the number of hours they put in per week? Uh, no, we, we didn't, and it fluctuates so widely based on the election periods, the referendum periods, uh, primaries. Um, I think, you know, one of the things we heard is that they do a lot of work then, but they're still working throughout the year, and then they have deputies that help them in an hourly basis. <coughs> Um, during those you know, key crunch times when the polls are open. Um, I, I don't believe we ended up getting anything that said what their work week hours are. I think, actually, we do. They're three days a week, and I think it's three and a half hours, so it's like a 10 hour. 10 hours. It's 10 hours a week. <clears throat> okay. So, but it's not anything that's necessarily stipulated. It's just that those are their office hours, but they're working weekends or working sometimes nights, whenever the need is to get their services. And I think they did say that just this past few months they've been getting so many new registered voters that it was taking them a very long time right. to put in that information. Right. <coughs> Said in the minutes here that um, They have office hours three days a week for three and a half hours at a minimum. Prior to any election or voting, they put in a lot more. She added that she thinks the salaries for the last four years have been fair, but that she would like it to be continued, which you alluded to already. Mm -hmm. um, and that they're seeing an influx in um, uh, online registrations, which typically um, during an election cycle, for instance, this year because of a gubernatorial race, uh, they were getting 15 at least 11 to 15 new registrations, which take approximately 20 minutes to process and get into the system. So, I mean, I don't think there's a way to figure out exactly a standardized amount of hours that they work. I think their, their work fluctuates um, based on demands. I would, I, I wanted to add something, um, uh, and Mitch confirmed it. I just want to make sure that <laughs> He went back and and uh, in his bullet points to us on October 16th, he did indicate that the uh, Board of Finance made adjustments for the registrars uh, for the four years, uh, and the salary was set. Um, so the first year increase was 5%, and then the next three were at 1.5%. And I remember uh, that that five percent was really because there were no increases the four years before. Jonathan, I believe you were on the board at that point. Catch up. Yeah. yeah, it was a, it was a catch up, yeah. and then the, and then it went one point five from that point forward. So. And then I'll I'll add this too. I think at the you know in the discussion maybe four years ago we also talked about the five year average inflation. I know that no benchmark is a perfect thing to stick to, but mm -hmm. just to give an idea of how to protect a wage from inflation. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the five-year average. It's trailing, of course, and right now it's about 1.32. You can get it from different sources. I got it from inflation data. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much based on the CPI. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, hearing, you know, not having hours to work with and hearing that they feel like they have a kind of a fair and reasonable salary, mm -hmm. maybe some kind of protection against inflation would keep them there. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the board concurs. Okay. Um, I think Guilford is very lucky with the, the right. work that our registrars do. I think they protect our election system, and uh, based on this past election alone, uh, we had very little problems. And I think it's it's Testament. that speaks to their work. Mm -hmm. um, so I have no problem with uh, seeing them get uh, an increase in their salary. And I'd, I'd be, you know, I'd like to put forth, you know, an increase of perhaps one and a half percent a year for the next four years each, is what I was thinking. Okay. Megan, Jeff? That, that's, they've been getting one and a half over the last three years. Uh, I think that tracks, I haven't looked at the inflation numbers that you did, Jonathan, but that seems to track along the, along the, slide, along the lines, the slight increase and I do think Veronica you're absolutely right we we're very lucky to have 
um, the two registrars that we have now, and we we'd see what what a good what job they do if, if it if it didn't work as well <laughs> yeah. as it did. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's true. And so I think you know paying them a fair wage or giving them an increase to continue to do the job they're doing would go a long way. So I, I'm I, I'd be fine with the 1.5 as well. Yeah, I think that's really fair and very reasonable. Sounds like we're kind of continuing where they're at now and giving them some protection from inflation, so it sounds reasonable to me. Uh, fair and continued fair is what I keep going on. Um, I did speak to, uh, just so you know, I did speak to Mr. Gammerman about this, and he's in line. So um, I think right now at this particular moment, 1.5 is where we want to go with this. It seems like we're... Pretty much all in consensus. Do you need a motion for that? We would need a motion, yes. And are we? Doing oh wait a minute, we need a. Do, do we, we need? I'm sorry. We, what we should have done is probably take um, had a motion to take Remove it off the table. table. So moved. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So now it's off the table. So and now we can discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> hey Mike, can you re rewind the tape? Um, okay. So now we can entertain a motion. Yes. I move that. Um, we provide the registrar of voters with a one and a half percent increase in their salary over the next each year for the next four. Is it four years that we need? Yes. Four years. That's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Four years. I'll second that. Um, yes. Yeah, the date of that I was increase. just going. I was just going to add in terms of discussion uh, that uh, increase would begin starting on July first of two thousand nineteen, and would be provided annually on July 1st, 2020, 21, and 22. I'll I second that as amended. Okay. And my further discussion on that is because I think that was, I, I put this in here because that was the motion I think we had four years ago. So I want to make sure I stuck to the script here. Um, okay. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'd also like to uh, wish our current registrar of voters, Louise Graver, a happy retirement. She's worked very hard for the town of Guilford, and I wish her nothing but good speed. Yes. I Second agree. as well. Yeah. Yes. And congratulations to the two registrar of voters who are newly elected. Newly yep. elected, yes. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, with that, we can move over to item number nine, new business. Uh, two of the ones I had on here were actually were capital plan workshop on November 29th, 830 in Selectman's conference room and, uh, kind of, we're beating it now, but the joint budget committee meetings on the, uh, the first one being on the 17th of December on Monday. Um, I did mention at the beginning of this meeting that I was going to have an update regarding, um, standing building committee. We did not receive the uh, meeting minutes, but I wanted to give you all an update, um, which I have shared with the board by email, um, both over the summer as well as not too many weeks ago, maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paraphrase actually from the standing building draft minutes. I was asked to review these to make sure it captured everything correctly. Um, and so with that, I'm going to just read this, um, and then I'll entertain any comments from that point. And it'll be easier for me to read it than to try to paraphrase, actually. Um, so I did attend the Standing Building Committee meeting on November 6th, uh, and under the Board of Finance report, uh, it states, Mr. Ailes explained that he is a principal in the firm of Antonazzi & Associates. When this firm applied to serve on the town's on-call list, he approached the Board of Ethics to make sure this would not be a conflict of interest. The Board of Ethics advised that it was acceptable for the firm to apply, but recommended that Mr. Ailes come back to them if the firm is selected. Once the firm was selected, he had further discussion with the Board of Ethics, and they recommended that he no longer serve as the liaison to the Standing Building Committee, and that he have no say in the creation of fees or the management of day-to-day -day projects with the town. He will be making an announcement at the next Board of Finance meeting to ensure transparency. Even though he can no longer serve as the liaison to the Standing Building Committee, he feels strong, strongly that it is important that a relationship between the Standing Building Committee and the Board of Finance continue. He recommended that another Board of Finance member volunteer to serve as liaison or that a Standing Building Committee member serve as a liaison 
and attend the Board of Finance meetings on the third Monday at 7.30 p.m. at the Community Center. Mr. DeMeo, who is a member of the Building Committee, suggested that the Standing Building Committee consider having members rotate attendance of the Board of Finance meetings so the need to attend a second meeting is not placed on one member and to give the Board of Finance members an opportunity to meet all of the Standing Building Committee members. Mr. Ailes agreed to discuss this recommendation with the Board of Finance and report back to the committee. Um, and that's the paragraph that's um, in the Standing Building. I felt it was also important to indicate um, and it's based on questions that I received also from the Board of Ethics. I, I was grilled, by the way, I did go in front of the Board of Ethics and I was grilled for about an hour, um, which was appropriate. Um, I, I want to make it very clear that this was an effort that my firm took on that I uh, had no part of. Um, the contract in question here is an on-call contract with the Town of Guilford and we may get work out of it and we may not but the ultimate uh, uh, decision to go after this we do a lot of on-call work with a lot of municipalities across the state of connecticut and uh, i had nothing to do with this particular submission that was made and that guilford eventually selected us on when i knew this was happening and that we submitted i then went to the uh, board of ethics to confirm that there were no issues that they didn't have any issues that i didn't have any issues uh, and i in fact um, I wrote to them and then I came back in front of them with the uh, when the selection was made. Um, so I went through the proper channels and I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that um, just in case it were to come up. I don't want there to be any um, thoughts of anything going on behind the scenes. There was nothing. Um, but I wanted to make sure that it was brought to the attention of this board and I've done it twice in email and uh, it will come up again obviously in the me meeting minutes that we're going to be getting uh, shortly from the standing building that I will forward on. Um, so with that, I'm going to ask first on the Board of Finance side regarding our relationship with the Standing Building Committee, um, what our pleasure might be or what we would like the, um, how we would like that relationship to, to continue. I would say it's basically one of three options. Uh, the two that I mentioned, either liaisoning back and forth and going to meetings between them coming here or one of us going there or um, assigning someone as a liaison from this board and when we have questions on the board of you know building committee um, that we just bring it to the chair's attention and that person will directly um, communicate with either the chairman or with Cliff Gurnham. Um, it doesn't really matter to me except that I do still very still feel very um, strongly about the fact that there was a relationship that continued with the building committee because of the amount of money that goes yeah, uh, on capital projects. Um, and it's no different than pension. Pension is a big part, of, <laughs> big part of our town finances, so is capital. So um, just wanted to entertain any comments or questions regarding that. Uh, go ahead. You want to start? No, go ahead. Um, I'll start and just say that uh, their proposal does fit pretty well with our model. Parts of our government that are involved with the most amount of appropriations and spending and revenue are, are coming to attend our meetings. Um, I do feel bad though because they're probably volunteer and I'm going to ask them to come to another meeting, but that's uh, the as nature, our, nature as, of as public our, service. Yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like their proposal and feel like it fits pretty strongly with our model. To, to have them, to have them, to have them maybe come, rotate yeah. through and come through and sit through the beginning of the meeting. I, I did indicate to them you don't have to stay for the entire meeting if you want to. That's up well, to maybe you. Maybe we could put them at the top of the meeting, you we, know, as a, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, they are. I mean, they're with, within the first five or ten yeah. minutes of our yeah. meetings, we're usually talking about standing buildings. So. Yeah. I like it. I like having someone from the standing building committee come here because for a couple of reasons. It allows us to ask questions, mm -hmm. get maybe a little, I mean, not that you didn't do a great job reporting back to us, All but right. it gives us an opportunity to explore things in greater right. detail or thought process and that type of thing. The other thing that I think is, is good about it is that um, uh, it doesn't put the burden on one member of this board and if for any reason that person can't make a meeting or they have a, a conflict with their schedule, mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it, it, it doesn't prevent us from getting information from the Standing Building Committee. Um, and so that way just adding them to the agenda and having somebody rotate through seems to make 
from my perspective, to make the most sense. Plus, it's good to get to meet the other people yeah, who, yeah, yeah. who we there read about a, in the minutes. That's a good point. There was a time when standing building was le was down a few members. Are they fully staffed now? They're down again. They're short one? Yes, they are down again. Um, but, of course, looking. So, by the way, that's another, you know, anybody yeah. who's interested in standing building committee, come on out. Um, yeah, and I, I just want to make sure, you know, on the liaison, I, I mean, I came to this board from the standing building committee and my involvement on it. And I always thought it was something that I had to offer that I could kind of read into these. Well, you had a so I had a different perspective, and I thought it was helpful. Um, and I think that maybe now at this point, having them be here, um, it's it's not something that's required, but it is certainly a good uh, a good alliance that we have with them. So yeah. I will bring that um, I will bring that back. This particular item I can bring back to uh, Scott Orenstein and to Cliff Gurnham and indicate this is our. Um, we would like this direction and uh, move forward in that, that manner. Hopefully starting in December. If not, then we'll start beginning of the 2019 season. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Any other new business? With that, uh, item number 10, public forum. Anybody wishing to address the board in public forum? Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> and you took the words right out of my mouth. Thank you, Bob. Um, with that, before we have a motion to adjourn, uh, I just wanted to wish everybody uh, on the, in the viewing audience, all 10 at 1 o'clock in the morning, as I always, I always like to joke, <laughs> the insomniacs, um, happy Thanksgiving. and uh, Safe travels. Uh, safe travels, yes. Yep. It's going to be one of the busiest travel years, they're saying, this year because gas prices are down. So take advantage of them. I heard you might need a heavy coat as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stay warm. Yeah, definitely stay warm. Okay. With that, motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.